We're gonna create an awesome piece of work today because I'm gonna show you how to easily blend and texture titles or logos into any background that you have. And then we're gonna go crazy with the effects and create some anarchy. Heck yeah. All right, so we have After Effects loaded up and if you want, you can download the project files for free. We're gonna get started with texturing a title or a logo right off the bat. It's actually very simple to do. It just requires a little bit of attention uh, to detail and you'll be able to apply this to any texture that you have with your title or uh, logo. So here we are in a tutorial composition. We already have a title and the texture that we want to ingrain our title into. So once you get a title or your logo, the first thing you should do, what I suggest is go to layer, pre-compose and just call it placeholder. This way you can easily swap it out later uh, and no big deal. I like doing that. All right, so what we wanna do is take our texture layer that we're using and we'll go to edit duplicates and we'll make sure it's above the placeholder for right now. And what we wanna do is take our placeholder, go to the track mat. If you don't see that toggle switch in modes, set your track mat to that duplicated texture layer. That should turn it off and make sure you click on the invert button. So it should be set to uh, Luma Matte. And we get this, we can slightly see through the title, but it looks kind of amateur. We really wanna get that nice texture in there. So what we wanna do is grab our top texture layer, go to effect, color correction, grab curves. So in how you use this curves effect, it's gonna completely up to the texture that you're using. So you're gonna have to play around with it. So for example, I can increase the uh, contrast of this to help bring out the whiteness of our text. But in another example, I might want to come here and actually bring down the curve and this point here. And this will kind of help me blend the shadows a little different from the highlights. So you're going to have to just experiment with the curves effect depending on the image you're using. You might also want to change the channel and play around with the curve to see how it blends into your work. So primarily the RBG channel is the one that you're going to want to use to dial in this look. And also depending on the texture, another effect you might want to take a look at is go to effect channel and grab invert. So for this, this does a completely different look. However, if I apply the invert effect to the texture that we're working on, you know, that doesn't look so good. So just another effect that you can experiment with to fine tune your look. So right off the bat, we already have a really nice look on this, but we got to take this to the next level. And I want to show it some further technique. Depending on the texture you're using, sometimes the normal blend mode looks good. But if I take a look at this texture and set this to say linear lights, it's going to blend a little bit differently. So go ahead and experiment with the blend modes and figure out what works best uh, for your image. Another thing you can do to help bring out the brightness of your text is just to take your layer, go to edit duplicates, and that will help punch out the brightness of your text a little bit more. But before I actually duplicate this, I wanna go ahead and create this kind of rough, you know, old texture look on our text with a few effects. So I'm gonna come here to effect, stylize, and select CC glass. We'll open up surface, set the bump map to your top texture, and set the source to effects and mask. And we can increase the displacement. I'll set it to 200, but it just go ahead and experiment for yourself. And that will, and this will create this nice deteriorated sort of look on our title. So it's not so clean. Then we can go to effect, distort and grab a displacement map. Now these effects are optional, but I'm just giving some extra techniques for your work. So we'll set our displacement map layer to the textured, and then we'll set this back to effects and mask. And here we can adjust the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement to kind of roughen up those fine, small details. So a little before and after, if I go ahead and turn this off, still kind of clean, but with the displacement map, it totally kind of makes it like a paint splatter. So it looks nice. I'm just gonna use the settings of 30 and 10, but use what works for you. Now, if I want, I could choose to take my placeholder and duplicate it. Uh, and then maybe hit T on my keyboard for opacity and lower the opacity so I can kind of control the level of brightness of my text really easily. So since we technically don't have any sponsors, before we dive deeper into this video, we want to let you know about our amazing Motion Duck extension packs designed specifically for After Effects and Premiere Pro users. With over 20,000 customizable templates, our Motion Duck extension packs make creating professional grade projects a breeze. Our extension allows you to browse, import, and edit templates right within your project. And to sweeten the deal, we have a 100 free template pack that you can download with the links in the description below. And if you do purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our YouTube channel, so thank you very much. All right, so the bulk of the tutorial is actually over, but I wanna take this a little bit further and talk about adding some creative effects to really take this to the next level. So one thing I have here is camera shake, this really cool light beam, and also this sort of like melting paint effect or the dripping paint effect, if I can restate that. So this is one way you can create a camera shake effect. Go to layer, new adjustment layer, and go to effect, uh, stylize and motion tile. And we'll alt click stopwatch for tile center and we'll type in wiggle. 
open parenthesis, maybe a one or a 0.5 comma 50. So go ahead and pause the video, look at my expression. That's what I'm using. And then what we wanna do is check on mirror edges. All right, so we added a little bit of camera shake to our work, looking good. Another thing I like to do is go ahead and create another adjustment layer, go to effect, noise and grain, add noise, and set this up to 12%. And this will just add a little bit of extra texture to your work. Now, what about the drippy paint effect? It's very easy to do this. What we want to do is go to our placeholder layer. So what we want to do is grab our title and go to effect, distort, and we'll grab liquify. And, you know, this is kind of a fun effect to use, but you might want to lower the quality of your uh, comp here so it's quicker to use this. Here's liquify. What we want to do is open the warp tool options, set the brush pressure to maybe about 100. You're welcome to increase the brush size, but whatever, I think it's fine. And then all we need to do is click and just start kind of creating these random, you know, uh, drippy paint effects. I'm in quarter quality, so it's not going to look amazing, um, but you're welcome to do what you wish. Uh, kind of just disrupt your image, do something random. You can do things like this. All right, so then just the keyframe is very easy. All you need to do is add a keyframe for distortion mesh. We can then hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframe, move it forward in our timeline to maybe like five, six, seven seconds, however long you want it to be, and just click on reset. So in quarter quality, we'll now have this sort of paint drip effect, uh, which looks good. So back in our main composition, so now we can see that our text gets deteriorated even more. One thing you might want to do is adjust the liquefaction to go to the bottom of your comp so it'll look like it's dripping, you know, off screen. And, uh, you know, that's a really cool way to look at this. All right, the last thing I want to take a look at is just a little bonus here. I'll link this in the description so you can download it, but we, I have this volumetric light pack that is absolutely free from Premium Beat. I'll link it in the description. And what we can do is we can grab one of the assets, bring it into our composition, maybe underneath the camera shake, and we'll go to the blend mode and we can set this to hard light. And this will give us a really nice texture. One thing I might do is go to effect color correction and grab a tint. So this way we can keep the original colors of our scene. So now with all of our assets applied, we'll have something really cool like this, a nice little scene with a lot of options to just create something kind of cool. As always, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button as we post multiple After Effects videos every week and always be creative.